Welcome to Nova Online Math 161. In this video, I'm going to show you how to write inverse functions and find its domain. Given f of x equals square root of 2x minus 1, find a domain of f of x in interval notation. So we're not writing the inverse just yet, but they just want us to find the domain of the square root notation. So great review problem from section 1.3. Highlight that uh, radicand. Because remember, domain of a square root function is always that radicand greater than or equal to zero. Okay, set the radicand greater than or equal to zero. Let's solve for x. Add one to both sides. You will get 2x is greater than or equal to 1. And divide both sides by 2. You will get x is greater than or equal to 1 half. Now they want this in interval notation. So let me try to sketch a picture of this. So we have 1 half as our starting value. And I'm using a filled in circle because it says x can be equal to 1 half. Now it says x is greater than or equal to 1 half, right? So should we go to the right side or to the left side? Where are the greater things at? We have to go to the right side. So that will be the graph of this interval. And if you write that in interval notation, you will write bracket 1 half, comma, and what's all the way out there to the right? Positive infinity. So that will be the domain of f of x. Now let's think about the range of this function. I don't think they ask for it here, but I want to talk about the range of it because that will be very useful when we talk about the domain of the inverse function. Now think about this function for me. Um, it's a square root function and um, it's going to have a domain of one half. Okay, so if this is one, um, the half will be right here. And um, what will be the y value at half? If you plug in half, you will start right at zero, right? So just imagine, and we can definitely use a graphing calculator to talk about this, but um, if you plug in half into this function, um, you will have a y value of zero, okay? Um, and notice there is no negative sign in front of the square root, right? This square root function is going to go up from that point on, okay? This is going to be an increasing square root function. If you have a negative in front right there, then we will have the graph flipped upside down, and I'll tell you that this is a decreasing square root function. But this, um, there's no negative here. We're not going to flip it upside down. We're not going to reflect it across the x-axis. This square root will start at that point and will only increase. So, the domain of the square root function is from half to infinity, okay? So that's what the domain is. Now let's talk about the range of it, okay? The range of this square root function. When we plug in the possible smallest number of half in there, we're going to get zero. And that's the smallest y value it will have. But you notice, is going to increase, right? The graph of the square root function, if you remember it from section 1.7 when we did the transformation of functions, this will increase. So the range is going to go from zero to positive infinity. I'm going to, because you know how they never really ask for the range of the f of x, but I'm going to write it down because this will be, this will be helpful when we find the domain of the inverse function, okay? All right, let's go down. They want you to find the equation for f inverse of x, okay? So I'm going to copy the original function down there so that I can work with it, okay? Um, to find the inverse function, change the f of x to letter y and keep everything the same on the other side. If you want to find the inverse function, you must switch x and y. Switch x and y. So let's do that. Instead of y equals, you're gonna write x equals. And under square root, you're not going to have two x minus one, but you're going to have two y minus one. 
So that step is important. If you want to find the inverse function, then you need to switch x and y. And now, solve for x. I'm sorry, solve for y. Just going to have to now solve for y. So, um, let's get rid of the square root by squaring both sides. So, square the left-hand side, square the right-hand side. Then we have x squared equals this square root and the squaring will cancel each out. So, I only have 2y minus 1 out. Whoopsies. 2y minus 1 out. It comes straight out. Now let's add one to both sides. If you add one or just move this negative one to the left, you're going to get x squared plus one equals 2y. Now to solve for y, we just need to divide everything by two. And here's the answer. y equals or I guess we can give that inverse notation back. F inverse of x equals x squared plus 1 over 2. That's good, but if you want to write it in a different form, you can write it this way too. You can write it as, I mean, I love that answer. I will stop there. But if you want to write it as 1 over 2 x squared plus 1 over 2. That's another form that is, you know, these two are equivalent, um, but both of them are fine, okay? So we found the inverse function. Let's do the final task. What do they want? They want you to find f inverse, the domain of f inverse in interval notation, okay? We actually found it already, you guys. Um, if you think about the domain of a regular quadratic function, okay? We, you know, the domain of any quadratic function is actually all real numbers. But this is not in any quadratic function. This is actually the inverse function of a square root function. So I'm going to copy these okay, real quick, okay? I'm going to copy these down. Now I want to talk about these. Now, what I wrote down here are for the f of x. So f of x has a domain of half to infinity and a range of 0 to infinity. Now, guys, we just wrote f inverse. Okay? And how did we create f inverse? We did it by switching x and y, right? So if you want to talk about the domain, and range of f inverse, we just have to remember we need we, we just switch the x and y. So here is the domain of f inverse. What used to be the range is now the domain. Because the domain of the f inverse is zero to infinity. Now, if you want to find the range of the inverse function, is going to be the domain of the original function. See, that's why earlier, even though nobody asked me about the range of the inverse, I found it because if you just look at the quadratic function, this inverse function, and ask, what's the domain of this quadratic function? You know, we can make a mistake and say it's all real numbers. But when we talk about the domain of the inverse function, we have to think that it has to be the same as the range of the original function. So what is the domain of f inverse in interval notation? Right there, that's going to be your answer.